get people in in the conversation through designerly ways of working is just, it, it's, it's an incredible privilege really. Hi, I'm Alison Prendeville. I'm a reader at uh, LTC in the School of Design and uh, my research area is in service design. So in two of the projects which are based in India, we're using design methods um, to understand context. One of them is related to the use of antibiotics in the poultry supply chain from hatchery through to broiler, so that's to do with food systems. Currently, antibiotics are used in that system and we want to understand the pressures that are uh, arising on farmers within um, that context and looking at how design can be used to co-design interventions that will mitigate and ultimately reduce the use of antibiotics within that uh, process. So all, all the projects um, I'm working on um, are highly interdisciplinary. So I'm working on another project which is to do with the EU and plant molecular technologies with actually a team of um, uh, lab scientists who are developing vaccinations and interferon. Um, so really, again, high value um, pharmaceuticals. But one of, again, the problems with this area is that um, they're using new processes and um, we've got to engage the public around this new technology because it does involve some gene editing of plants. Um, we're looking at uh, health conditions such as new strategies for HIV treatment, but also for arthritis. But there are public concerns and we're trying to also understand what would these scenarios be around these new uh, treatment pathways. So whenever I do a project, it's always the design brings a human-centered approach. But also it's the idea that design facilitates a knowledge sharing between different partners. So you can have the microbiologists, you might have healthcare engineers, the diagnostic engineers, but actually design is the bridge maker between all of them, especially in workshops. So my, my background is, is really varied and I actually did start off um, going the science pathway, but then I switched on to design history and practice of textiles. Um, I then ended up doing postgraduate um, and then eventually my PhD, which was looking at the transportation systems. It was working with engineers about trying to put the user within the um, specification and looking at the seamless journey. So I've always liked this idea of bridging what I'd call sort of design with um, engineering and science. Um, I got the opportunity at UAL to really bring those together a few years ago when um, London College of Communication received some specialist funding for us to collaborate with Cranfield University which is all postgraduate uh, science and technology subjects and it was actually there that I've over my sort of academic career now have this real um, buzz but also um, great pleasure in bringing different disciplines together so each time you're presented for example with the gene um, editing the, the plant molecular um, uh, specialists in, at St George's Hospital you sort of think well where's design going to fit in this but actually because design is so incredibly human centered and it's so it's such a good way of connecting with people that actually it has an incredible role to play in these areas which really don't think about the human until it's quite late down in the development phase. So that doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's for diagnostics, it doesn't matter whether it's for pharmaceuticals and you know, using plants as bioreactors to get people in in the conversation through designerly ways of working is just, it, it's, it's an incredible privilege really. The, the research culture is incredibly diverse at London College of Communication. There's an amazing energy there. I'm constantly surprised by it. And that's because you realise that people are also working in healthcare and sectors and settings that you're working in. But because they might be coming from an arts practice perspective or a completely different design uh, field, you get this incredible, um, again, sharing of knowledge. And also just an appreciation of how to approach often quite complex situations, but it might be again, if having somebody who works in sound arts, their involvement in healthcare is so different from mine, but there's always something that you can learn from it. So in terms of that richness, it's a remarkable place.
Um, I think when you take on PhD students, the thing that I really value is that you're always learning from them as much as you're supporting somebody to embark on a research career. And the way in which you also have to approach some very, um, again, diverse um, settings is, is quite, you know, is, is always, it's a sort of thrill because you might get somebody working in healthcare in particular um, context, you might get another working with local government groups, but then also they all work in different ways. You're always learning from your PhD students, um, but equally in terms of having those opportunities of helping people formulate and to conceptualise what their research is going to be is, you know, is actually one of the real rewards of being a researcher. It's also when you see them coming and there's always confusion with a, com a PhD, there's ex it's an overwhelming experience. By the end of it, when you see very confident uh, PhD submissions and you see wonderful data collection, um, yeah, it's what being a reader is about, it's what being an academic is about, it's sharing that knowledge.